Okay, the first gang box right here. Now, I like to use the gang boxes that have the tabs on the sides right here uh, because these, all you got to do is just cut a hole for it, slip it in. When you tighten it up, the tab will stand up and then pull right up tight. So you don't have to worry about nailing it or screwing it into the box. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the uh, eight channel relay right here onto the box. So okay, I'm going to center it on the box. Drill a hole. I'm going to wall her the hole just a little bit. Makes it easier to get the screws in. I'm going to drop one in to hold it in place. Go over to the other side. Do the same thing. And now for the other two. Relays. The solder points right here, they stand up about an eighth of an inch. We don't want them uh, being pressured by being up against the box, so I'm going to space them out. And I'm going to do that with these old wall anchors I've got. I picked up a whole bag of them one time at a uh, hardware store they were doing a clearance and I got a whole bag of them for like a buck so I'm just gonna cut off the end of them right here that uh, is still together the bottom end of it will fall into two pieces but the top still together so let's cut all four of those off Now from the inside of the box, I'm going to use some needle nose pliers right here. My hands are a little too big to be getting down in this box. Stick the screw in, shove one of these little wall anchors on there, and they're plastic and once you cut them off you kind of squeeze them together so they'll fit on there fairly snug. Let's do that with all four of them. And this will hold it up off of the box about a you know, quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. Give it a little room for air to circulate under it as well. They're not actually threaded, I'm just screwing them on because they're tight and it's easier to get them on that way. Okay, let's put our relay on. And the nuts. And if it's a little bit tight up against the uh, relay right here where you can't get to it, just screw it from inside the box. Okay, just screw it down. Get all four of the nuts on there. Now we don't want to pull these real tight because that's just plastic, that little anchor spacer we put on there. 
So all we're wanting to do is just snug it so that it doesn't come loose, but there's no movement or vibration on these. So you don't have to have it super tight. If you pull it down any tighter, then you'll just crush that little plastic spacer. We don't want to do that. Alright, relays on there. Now the box itself, on the side that uh, has the eight long uh, connectors right here, these are the 110 connectors. Over on the other side, these are the 5 volt connectors coming from the Arduino. The power goes down here in the last one. So on the side here with the 110 connectors, we're going to open up the holes in this box. We're just going to pry them open. Okay. Now we're going to set that aside. We're going to put our sockets together. On the sockets you have two sides. You have a gold side or brass. The other side is silver or chrome. And then down here at the bottom you have a ground. The green one. On the side that is gold or brass colored the little tab that connects the two terminals, we want to break it off. That way we're separating each one. There. Okay. Now there's the tab I tore out. So now this socket is separate from this socket. They're not both together like they were when that tab was on there. The other side, you leave it alone. These are your commons. You want to keep them together because we'll be connecting one to the other because the common is just what it says it is. It is a common wire that goes from socket to socket. The common is also on the side of the socket that has the big slot. The power side, the hot side, is the little slot. And then the uh, ground is the third hole that's on them now. So, once you've got all your sockets that way, these here has already got the tab broke off of them. Now I'm going to get my wires ready. On the little white ones right here, which are 5 inch, the easiest thing is just to bend them in the middle so that you can hang on to them. Then we strip them off about 3 quarters of an inch. Take your needle nose, bend them both the same direction here. And this is ready to go on the socket. So do that with all of your white wires. You'll need three of them to connect the four together. So we've got three there ready. The black wires, the same story. Just bend it in the middle so you can hang on to it. Now the one end you want to cut off or strip off about three quarters of an inch, same as you did with the white ones. The other side you only need about a quarter inch stripped off of it. Because this is the end that connects into the power connectors on the relay. So once you do that, the three quarter inch end, bend it around, leave the other end straight. Straighten the wire back out and do that with all eight wires. I'll be right back as soon as I get all, all eight of these stripped off. Now attaching the wires, uh, myself, I prefer the, hole, the third hole down on these sockets. Some people prefer them up. That is your choice, but however you do it, uh, keep it the same all the way through the box. That way it's simpler to wire up. So now I'm going to connect on the gold side the black wires. And the black wires are uh, seven inches long. Now when you bend them, if they're too wide and it doesn't want to fit down in like it should, 
Then just take your needle nose and just tighten it up a little touch. And then tighten your screws. And I'm also putting them on there so that the direction that I'm turning the screw is the same direction that I have the hook. That way if it does anything it'll simply pull the hook in tighter. If you had it the other way and you were turning this way it might separate the hook and make it want to slip out from under it. So put it on the same way that you're turning the screw. Do that on all four of them. And that's those. Now we're going to turn them over and start attaching the white wires. As I say, I like the holes down, so we want the white wires under the power wires. Uh, it just makes it simpler. Once again, put them on the same direction as you're turning it. Top or bottom, doesn't matter how you start here. Put the next one on. Like I say, holes down. We're going to come all the way underneath of these. It's on the bottom screw, so I'll put it on the bottom screw of this next one. I'll put the next one on the top screw. Get my next socket. And this one's on the bottom, or the top screw I meant. As I say, I'm calling it top because of where the third hole is. I call the third hole side the bottom. And put your last wire on. And connect the last one here. And it's on the bottom screw, so I'll connect this one on the bottom screw. Top and bottom doesn't matter, it's just simpler so far as the way they go together. Okay. So there are those. As I say, once again, I consider the third hole the bottom, so the wire, the black one that's on the top screw of each one, I'm going to bend the end of it up just a little bit, and that's only purpose of that is so that I know that's the top socket. Because once you stick it down inside that box, it's going to be a little hard to tell which one's which, and then you'll have to get your meter out and test them to see which one's which. So if we do it like that and I bend the top wire, I know that's the top socket. Okay. Uh, one last thing here, we've got the ground. Most Christmas lights don't use a ground. They're two wire, just the hot and the common. They don't have a ground on them. But if you use this box for anything else, turning on lights or whatever you might use it for, you would have to be a good idea to have the ground in there. That way you don't have to worry about getting electrocuted on something that sits outside. Okay, I'm going to start coming down here about a foot. I'm just going to quick measure. I'm going to bend it over with my needle nose and I'm going to attach it to one of the green grounds. And tighten it down. Okay. 
on the long side right here I'm going to go up about four inches and I'll just use one of these this is about four inches I'm going to come up four inches and once again I'll bend it over I'm going to swing it around hook it on the next ground This piece of ground wire that I'm using here was 36 inches long. And I'll tighten that down. And if you don't have safety glasses on, if you don't wear glasses, you might want to put some on. Because as you can see, these wires can get up here where they can poke you right in the eye. So be a good idea to wear some if you don't have any, if you don't actually wear glasses all the time as I do bend it over about four inches again down to the next ground and the last one When you put it on there, just give it a little squeeze together. Make sure it's in behind that little keeper on there. Pull it up snug and tighten it down. Okay. I'll just straighten this out a little bit. And it's ready to be installed in the gang box. Now I'm going to put all six of them up here and show you the wires and how I've set them up. You can do it any way that's good for you. Um, I also uh, have to do that before I see which side the common goes on. Whether it's on this socket on this end or that socket on that end. So I need to lay them up here so I can see that. So let me set all six of them up here. I'll be right back. 